Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part two of server listing. If you haven't watched the first part, I recommend you do that now. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Now you may be able to see how it'll be problematic with say 50 servers all creating buttons in the same spot. And we're running into trouble because we're not tracking any of these buttons. We're not storing their information anywhere where we can find it again. And one way to store information is by creating a list. To use lists, let's go and type in the using system dot collection dot generic and make a new private list and if you've never seen it before it may look a bit intimidating but basically we just type in private list we want a list of buttons that we've instantiated and let's just name this join server buttons and this will be again everything we've instantiated so we just want to store all these buttons somewhere so we can remove them later and add more and position them appropriately this declaration isn't done we actually need to set this equal to a new list of buttons okay and now to add something to our list we've just created let's go down here again and let's go join server buttons the list we just created dot add and we're not actually adding the photon session itself we just created a list of buttons so let's add our join game button clone perfect so now every time a session is found it will create a button transform it appropriately for now just zero zero we'll change it later add a listener that lets the user click and join the session that it just found and we're also adding it to our list now now there's two things we have to do before we have a working server menu one of them is positioning of course we don't want them to spawn on top of each other like this but the other is we only want one of each server button to be created and a long story short I had a fair amount of trouble with this and essentially the solution I found was to clear delete all the buttons first so every time this is called every few seconds everything will be wiped and deleted and then immediately after we'll go through and find everything it creates and then instantiate it once again this sounds weird but if you have hundreds of games and maybe you sort them alphabetically the player it happens so fast the player won't notice them being deleted and we make sure also to remove any games that are no longer active so if a game got disconnected it won't be instantiated again and to the player it'll look like we're removing it and it will also accurately create everything only once since it gets created since it gets wiped and then created once again that probably sounded confusing but just stick with me let's create another private void function private void and let's name it clear sessions and in this we want to clear each button we find so for each button we can just name this button in join server buttons we want to destroy button dot game object again this may seem weird just stick with me and lastly we could do join server buttons dot remove the button we're currently looking at but I had some trouble with this method so instead I opt to do join server buttons dot clear at the end of this function and let's call that not in the for each method because that would be silly if we called clear sessions every time it created a new button for the session that was found it would only look like one server was ever created because they'd be it clear then it create one and then it would clear again and then it would create one again and on and on so instead let's call it right before the for each method so clear sessions 
So now, every time this is called, clear sessions will be called once, which wipes all of the buttons. It will go through and again instantiate all of them for us. So essentially, what this is doing is it'll make it look like there's only one that's ever called. Just to drive my point home, I'm going to put a print, which is like debug.log, clear sessions was called. And let's save and see what it looks like in the editor. So once again, with our client hosting, let's click join game. And it won't look visually different, but we should only get one button that gets instantiated. And we have, let me collapse this. So perfect. This was called twice, which means session list updated was called twice. And therefore it called cleared sessions again twice but there's only one prefab clone. That's exactly what we want. Um, you'll get warnings because it doesn't like you setting the parent. You can probably just ignore that. Lastly, we just need to position these buttons so when multiple buttons do get created, they're not on top of each other. And let's start by scaling our canvas. Instead of constant pixel size, let's scale with the screen size, and then you can bump this down a lot, maybe 300 by 300. I usually match 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it's probably good enough. This will also, when you build the client, it's been looking really small, I don't know if you've noticed, but the buttons are really small in my client, so this will make it look just about this big. And now with this at a uniform size, let's go ahead and see what an appropriate spacing looks like. So just for testing, um, I'm going to turn off this, all the buttons are the same size right now. So let's see how much a good spacing would look like. So it's at negative 50 right now, zero. So about 50 is a good spacing, I guess. So remember that. We're gonna want 50 spacing on the Y axis. Now that will vary depending on what you put your scaling size to, but let's go back and set this button active now. And now we can add a float, public float, button spacing, save that, head back into the editor where we can now put in our 50 or whatever you determined your appropriate spacing was, and the spacing itself shouldn't be that hard. Instead of saying new vector 3000, we just say button spacing times join server buttons dot count and that will just tell us how many buttons we've created and so essentially what this does is each time it'll go through the first time it will be set to zero because we just wiped it the next time it goes through since there's now one button in it it will be 50 times one the next time it goes through it will be 50 times two since now there have been two buttons added and so on. So let's go see if it worked. And one very, very important thing, it's probably been 30 minutes to an hour since I recorded the last segment. All our match names that we're creating right now are all named test match. So no matter how many servers we create, it will only find one because they're all named test match. So to make an easy fix, I can go into custom naming in a future video. Let's just make uh, a random int and set that equal to a random dot range between zero and maybe nine 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 just to make sure that we will not get the same random int and of course there's an ambiguity error because it doesn't know whether to use system dot random or unity engine dot random and just by previous experience I know it is unity engine dot random dot range so it should work now and then for our match name We'll just make it equal to test match plus random int. And now our match name should be unique and we should be able to find multiple different sessions. But just to make sure, let's check. So I have one here, it should pop up no problem. Bam, there it is. And what unfortunately you guys can't see, I have Unity set up on another computer right next to me. And I'm right about to push host game from that computer. I just pressed it. Let's wait a couple seconds. 
And there we go, another button popped up. Thank goodness. I have one more uh, session that I can press, so I'll press it one more time. I press it again. Hopefully a third button will pop up, and it does, thank goodness. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I promise you guys, each one of these will go to a separate match name. Um, I'll go over how to do custom match names in another video, but for now, this should be good enough. I just connected to my own um, instance, and looks like it worked. I should have connected to a different instance to show you guys that you can do cross-platform, but trust me, it will work, and I am very glad it worked. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like. Um, again, I'll do custom naming in a future video, shouldn't be too bad. And yeah, thanks for watching.